If you're learning to code and you're not using ChatGPT, you are missing out. It's revolutionizing everything. And if you're not using it to your advantage, you're gonna be like somebody in the early 20th century when cars were being mass produced, looking at their horse and being like, no, I'm gonna stick with this. I think this is the way to go. Now, I'm personally such a big fan of it that I use it to help do background research for this video. It helped to edit this video. And even what you're looking at right here is actually an AI robot. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, I'm not an AI robot. But in this video, actually, I'm gonna show you six ways that you can use ChatGPT to help you to learn to code a lot faster so that you're picking up things more quickly and making that progress that you wanna make. Now, for those of you living under a rock, ChatGPT is an AI chatbot developed by OpenAI, and it's consumed massive volumes of information. And so you can give it commands, you can ask it questions, and it will take all the information and try to use that to come up with very intelligent answers. It can do some insane things, like it can take an essay you've written and summarize it down. You can take an email that somebody sent you and create an automatic reply on that. It can also do things like tell jokes like Jerry Seinfeld. So I was thinking the other day, you know, what's the worst thing about being stuck in traffic? It's not the traffic, it's the people. I mean, have you ever been in a traffic jam and looked around and thought, wow, these people really know how to drive? It's pretty nuts. And by the way, in this video, I'm going to show you real examples of interacting with ChatGPT. So if you want to sign up for a free account and follow along, go to chat.openai.com. So let's get in the first way that you can use ChatGPT. You know when you're learning from a course or a book and you run into a concept that just doesn't quite make sense, so maybe even go to YouTube, you start reading some articles about it, but no matter how you try to rack your brain, it just doesn't quite click. What would be really nice is if you could just have a friend who you could call and say, can you explain this concept in simple terms? Well, guess what? ChatGPT can be that friend for you. Say you're learning JavaScript and you run into this weird idea called scope. Well, you could turn to your friend ChatGPT and see if it can give you a better explanation than you've been given so far. So maybe you'd ask it something like this. Can you explain how scope works in JavaScript? Scope refers to the visibility and accessibility of variables, functions, and objects in some particular part of your code during runtime. JavaScript has two types of scope, global and local. A variable defined outside of any function has global scope, which means it can be accessed by any other code in the program, include functions. Now, this is a pretty good explanation. It's just very technical. Looks like something you'd see in documentation. We want something that's a little bit more down on our level. So that's really cool, though, about ChatGPT is we can actually tell it to bring it more down to our level. So we're going to rephrase our original question. It's going to be a little bit interesting. So what we're going to say to it is, you are a professor at a college, and you're speaking to freshman computer science students. Explain to them in the most simple terms possible about how scope works in JavaScript. Use at least two code examples to help illustrate your points. Scope in JavaScript is like a set of rules that tell the computer where it can find a certain variable or function. Think of it like a school where different classrooms have different rules. In one classroom, let's call it the global classroom. All the students can access all the materials. This is similar to global scope in JavaScript, where a variable declared outside of a function can be accessed by any part of the code. Now, this is probably more what you're looking for, something that's less technical and is using examples. Now, you can keep going down the rabbit hole. You can keep asking the same questions and ask it for different explanations. But overall, hopefully, you can start to see that this is the type of thing that can really help you out. The next thing we'll address here is confusion when reading code. So you know how maybe you are reading through some code. You understand all the syntax of it, but it just doesn't make sense. You can't quite follow what's going on. For example, here's some code that a client of mine was working on that he didn't quite really understand what was going on, so he asked me about it. As you can see, the tutorial he was working on was giving him some code about how to calculate grades when an array is passed into this function. The ideal situation here would be you could just call up your mentor, your friend, and they can kind of break things down and help you get through it. Or you'd have to develop the really powerful AI that could explain what's going on here. Oh my gosh, that already exists? Yes, it does. ChatGPT can help you to really explain what is going on with your code. All you have to do is give it a command, say explain what this code is doing, provide the code, and what's really cool here is you can see it comes up with eight bullet points explaining what each line of code is doing. And this type of commentary is very helpful. So it can help you just kind of slowly break things down, which is exactly what a friend or a mentor can do. The next thing you're gonna struggle with is where to find the best information for learning to code. So we can turn to ChatGPT here. Oh, wow, it's saying that Andy Sterkwitz is the only source of information on programming you'll ever need. So I guess that means you better go down below, smash that subscribe button, because then you'll never miss when I put out a new video. Now, speaking of my videos, if you've ever watched them before, you know I'm always harping that you all build projects. You cannot become a developer just by learning theory, by reading through some books. You actually have to go and build out a portfolio. The problem is many of you guys are reaching out and saying, I'm not really sure what to build. What, what types of projects should I build? I don't know. I, have, I don't have any ideas, right? Well, guess what? ChatGPT can help you with that. You can literally go there right now and ask it something like, what are some simple coding projects I can build in JavaScript? Now, these are some solid answers, but as you can see here, we really wanna utilize its built-in powers a little bit better by being even more specific. So what I recommend here is let's ask it, what are 10 simple projects I can build using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that would be good for a brand new programmer? But also say this, say, 
please include a one to two sentence description of each project. This is more of what we're looking for. First of all, it's 10 excellent recommendations, but for each project, it gives us a brief description on what it needs to do. So that's awesome. Now you can just pick one from this list. You can build all 10, but when you're ready to step up to maybe a more advanced project, you can use ChatGPT as well. So you could go there and say, can you give me an example of a capstone project to build in JavaScript? Please describe the different features I should build into it as well. And here you go. I love this. This is a perfect example of how it can give you a really good project idea. And it can even tell you exact features that you need to build in here, right? This is perfect. So you can see, you can use it for easy, intermediate and advanced projects. Now, another problem you're going to have as a new programmer is you never know if the code you wrote is good, bad, or somewhere in between. Basically you want some sort of feedback and this is exactly what chat GPT can do. So let's say I wrote this code here that pulls out even numbers from an array and it prints it to the console. You can literally just paste that into chat GPT. And before you do make sure to say, how would you improve this code? I absolutely love this response because what you can see here is that it's telling us that you can use the filter method. So maybe if you've never heard of the filter methods is something you can think about, which makes it more readable. It talks about using the let versus the var keyword because you want to limit the scope of the variable. I just love everything about this. And the other key thing here is it gives you a disclaimer that it's really impossible to give somebody feedback on what is the best code or how to improve it without knowing the bigger context. Very important to know, ChatGPT is not going to give you the best code. It's just going to give you what it thinks can be helpful. So to always take that with a grain of salt. Now, what's really cool with this is I actually plugged in one of my clients applications. So she wrote a vowel counter, which means that you can plug in some text. It will tell me how many vowels that you have. I just took the, the JavaScript file and I plugged it in there and it was really cool because it actually recommended that she combine two of her functions into one, which shows that ChatGPT is not just rudimentary, it can actually analyze things, which is really impressive in my opinion. Now, really important about this, you don't even have to take the feedback it's giving you, but just getting a different perspective on things or a different way to write some code that you wrote is massively helpful and something that you just can't really get from Google or any other place. The next thing I'm gonna show you actually really shocked me when I was first playing around with ChatGPT. So you know how, like I always say, build projects. So you get really excited, you're gonna go build that to-do app, but you open up your code editor and you just see that blank screen and nothing comes, right? You don't even know how to proceed forward on a simple project like a to-do app. Well, ChatGPT can actually help you with this without kind of giving away the farm, without actually writing the code for you. So let's talk about an example here. So you could just go to ChatGPT, you could say, how do I go about creating a simple to-do app in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? And you can see here, it almost creates a list of tasks that you can go through one by one. This is very similar to what I would even call like pseudo coding it out. It can kind of say like, okay, here's step one, here's step two, and here's step three. This explanation it gives, in my opinion, is a perfect nudge for it because it's not giving you any code to write. And it's really showing you how a real developer actually goes about writing code, which is first you think of the idea of what you want, a to-do app. You think of what it needs to do. And then you just create a list of tasks, which I call small chunking. You create small little tasks. You can work on one by one, starting with the simplest thing. So while yes, yeah, some people say like, oh, it's giving away the problem solving process or it's making it too easy. You can use this when you're literally stuck. You don't know how to proceed. Use something like this to help you move forward so that you're not stuck. Now, the last thing we're gonna cover here is in my opinion, the most powerful way that you can use ChatGPT to learn to code. As you're writing code and creating things, you're going to get stuck. Basically, you're gonna write some code that you know should produce a specific outcome, but when you go ahead and run it, it's just not working. So you look through your code, you try rewriting it for whatever reason, it's just not working. This is a very frustrating experience. Let's actually take a real world example. I've seen something that happens with a lot of new programmers. Here you can see a function that takes two numbers as an arguments and it will basically tell you whether or not those two numbers added together makes the number 10. Now, as you can see here, I made a small rookie mistake, right? If you look really closely at it, maybe you do, maybe you don't. So it returns false no matter what, even if the two numbers equal 10. Now, as an experienced developer, I can clearly see what the problem with this code is, but if you're new, I'm telling you, a lot of you guys will get stumped with this sort of thing when you're new. So if you end up getting stuck for 20 or 30 minutes, the question is always, should you move on? Should you just stay stuck with it? Well, guess what? You can actually just ask ChatGPT and say, why isn't my code working? As you can see there, I made a small but annoying mistake that plagues a lot of new developers. So when you're comparing two things in JavaScript known as a quality comparison, you need to use two equal signs and not one. When you use a single equal sign, that's an assignment operator. And the logic for my function completely flipped because of that. Now this aspect of chat GPT is an absolute godsend. It's gonna help you in really rough spots, but I have to warn you, you should use this with care. Getting stuck is actually the best thing that can ever happen to you because when you get stuck, you're forced to really read through your code to understand the debugging process, which is really like the process of elimination. 
and it will really force you to build up the neural like pathways in your brain to really understand how to read code. There's no way around it. So if the first instinct for you is you get stuck for five minutes and you're like, I'm gonna go to chat GPT, that's not good. That will literally stunt your learning. You will not grow. What you should actually treat it more as is a only break this in case of emergency type thing where if you've been racking your brain for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, you've tried everything and it doesn't make sense, then go to ChatGPT. That's the best way to use it, in my opinion. Now, are you a self-taught developer looking to land your first job? If you're looking for support and guidance throughout that process, I have a mastermind program that you may be interested in. I've helped a lot of my previous clients land jobs at places like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Amazon, L3 Harris, if you're interested in potentially joining that program, I will leave a link in the description below of how you can do that. It will entail a call with me where I will assess where you're currently at. If I can tell mentorship's a great fit, we can get into it. I can explain exactly how it works, what the investment is, and we can kind of go from there. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. And as always, guys, peace out.